welcome back to the Muegas and uh, today I want to uh, share with you um, this YouTuber by the name Clara Gavi and uh, he, his thoughts and how he you know his thought process I I I enjoy his his presentation because he is authentic he he says what is in his mind and in a world where um, telling truth is kryptonite to some of us or to most of us in the society it is refreshing to hear somebody who is not afraid to share his thoughts um, so wrong or right Somebody who is able to articulate his position is somebody who gets my respect. Okay, I don't have to agree with you. Uh, I, do, I don't have to disagree with you. But, you know, if you are somebody who is not afraid to express what you are thinking, what uh, you are thinking, I'm not going to say feeling because we are too much into our feelings. You know, just share what you're thinking. Um, and then, you know, that opens up uh, the, a platform or a space for conversation. And that is something which is really lacking in, in today's society. Everybody is too afraid of offending people. And um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have this thing where, you know, if, if you are offended, then that is your problem. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, to change my position because you are offended. I, w I only change my position if you, you give me new information that, you know, makes me rethink, not coming, crying, not feeling. Because like Ben Shapiro says, facts don't care about your feelings. Anyway, let's listen what um, Sarah has to say about street workers. Uh, not exactly street workers, but so the, the title of his videos, you are a hoe and it's okay. So let's listen to what he has to say. Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion had a song called WAP, okay? Wet Ass Pussy. That's what the song was called. And they, for however long the song was, were talking about their wet ass pussy. And the hook of the song was, there's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. That was the hook of the song. While they are shaking their asses, skinning out their pom poms, showing everyone that they are the basically the whores of this house uh <laughs> um cardi b was wasn't she the one to whom uh the current president of the u.s engaged uh, on behalf of black people in america And wasn't this song, the WAP song, when it came out, I, I had some crazy stuff from, from the womanist in, um, specifically in America and Western nations, where they were saying how liberating the song is, how, how it speaks about women and how you know they they are taking uh, uh, they, they are proud of their WAP and all that crap and so to these women what they were saying is they were proud if the hook of the song is as Sarah has said then these women were actually being proud of being that which the song was saying but i thought this word the h the w h o r e word 
is an insult. I thought if anyone called a woman this word, the woman will be insulted. But now uh, they praised a song that was calling them a name which they find insultive and offensive. Hmm? We have every right to be W-H-O-R-E. And when that song came on, millions and millions and millions and millions of women were dancing to that song. So this prevailing psychology, right, this prevailing psychology is in and around the world. And now men are seeing this and they're saying, whoa, what the hell happened here? When did it be okay to be a whore? Same question I asked. When, when, like, I thought this word was insulting. Like, am I wrong? Uh, am I too old? I mean, if, if you want to be W-H-O-R-E, then just tell us that's what you want. But don't pretend to be insulted when somebody calls you this word, and then a song that calls you the same is the one you are celebrating and 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 I'm, I'm not just limiting myself to to this song and this word because the n word is in a lot of american songs sung and produced by black people in fact they call each other the n word so they say, oh, but it, it, it is not the ER, it is the G. I mean, who cares? I am Kenyan. I, 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 there is no difference when I hear it. You say, oh, the ER has a R on it. I mean, it's the same word. Okay, so if, if I call you the N word, offends you, but then you call someone else the n-word and it is means brotherhood it doesn't make sense anyway back to the w-h-o-r-e because as far as i know me growing up it wasn't a thing to be a whore especially not shout about it however modern day feminism has told women it's okay to be whores and plus i can be a whore but you got to respect the fact that I'm a whore. No. I don't have to respect the fact that you're a W-H-O-R-E. It's like me saying, I am an asshole. But then you got to respect the fact that I'm an asshole. No. Th that's, that's not how the world works. Okay, if you're a W-H-O-R-E, then I will treat you like a W-H-O-R-E. If I respect W-H-O-R-E, then I will give you the respect. If I do not respect W-H-O-R-E, and you have already classified yourself as such, why do you want me to respect you? Why do you expect me to respect you? Seriously. It's like, no, love. <laughs> we don't have to respect the fact that you're a whore, as a matter of fact. We can say we don't like whores, and if you say you don't like whores, then all of a sudden you're a misogynist and you're a woman hater. I'm telling you, like, a lot of this stuff is discombobulated nonsense. It's discombobulated madness. And us as men have been sitting here for the past four decades watching this psychology take, uh, take a hold on a lot of women. We've been watching this psychology take shape and we're saying, OK, cool, let's sit back and see what type of woman this produces what type of woman it produces okay is the type of woman that can make multiple mistakes be a whore have multiple children for multiple men and then after she's made all the mistakes and realized oh fuck i made a few mistakes while i was being a whore actually i want one of those high value guys who's basically going to be my knight in shining armor you don't get that no you don't get that we are a product of our experience and our mistakes. So if you had child number one with guy X, 
didn't learn from it, had child number two with guy Y, didn't learn from that, had child number three. And then now once you realize that nobody wants you, you have too many bills to pay because you know you are raising two, three, four kids alone. And you know your life, you know, your life is has gone to shit. And now you want to get a, a man who has dedicated most of his life to building wealth so that he can give the best to his wife and his kids. You want to get that man who was not going around impregnating women because he wanted his kids to have his full legacy. Now you ex you expect that man to even notice your existence. And if he does not want you, you feel some type of way. You know, Lizzo has been, is a very good example of this. So Li Lizzo, I, 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 I just know that she's overweight. Okay, I, I don't go into, you know, she's a musician or whatever. But she has a problem with her weight. No, she does not have a problem with her weight. Um, but maybe the weight has a problem with her because she is overweight, right? And uh, because she is overweight, she thinks that she should be able to get with Henry Cavill. The guy who plays Superman. The guy who is in shape, ripped, you know. She thinks she deserves to get with him. And when he rebuffed her, she felt some type of way. Like, listen, woman. This guy probably lives in the gym to look the way he looks. And you are just out here overweight and expect him to notice you? Are you crazy? Are you and so um, this woman who has two, three, four children with different baby daddies, who is probably unemployed, who is probably wants to get with somebody who makes a million Kenya shillings a year. So that means this is a guy who makes a hundred K a month roughly. You think you think this person even notices your existence? And the level of This this is this is triggering to me. And the level of <laughs> self and awareness and the level of entitlement that this person has to be experiencing to think that they de nobody deserves anything, everything you work for. Even those people who have inherited from their parents, their parents worked for it. So somebody had to put in work to get things where they are. You don't just wake up in the morning and you are ripped and you, you know you are good, you are in good shape. You look, no, you have to spend months and months and months and years in the gym working on your, or on the weights, uh, you know, running on the treadmills, whatever you need to do to look the way you look. And then you need to, you know, watch what you eat. You need to, come on. So now you, you have these multiple baggages and you expect somebody who can get any woman any to 
look at you. I am not saying that people will not, that men will not get with you. Of course, men will get with you. But marry you? Hell no. They will get with you because, you know, you are giving it out. And men, we are built like that. Very few men will, you know, pass a free gift. Anyway, let's let's continue. And save me. It's like, doesn't work like that, sweetheart. It actually doesn't work like that. And so what I think Kevin is dealing with in America specifically is the psychology of new age feminism and the entitlement that women can do whatever the hell they want. And you can, you can do whatever the hell they want. You can do whatever the hell you want, you but there are also going to be consequences to you doing whatever the hell you want. It doesn't mean that everyone is going to abide by your standards. True. They're not going to abide by your standards. You've got your own standards of a whore that it's okay for you to shake your ass on TV every day and call yourself a whore. Cool. That don't mean I got to take it. And if I am a quote unquote high value man and your whore himself has come to me after you've been a whore asking me to save you from your whorish behaviors, I'm going to say respectfully, no, my dear. No. Cardi B. Yeah. So um, go over to his uh, channel, subscribe. And, you know, he has interesting thoughts about religion, about, uh, you know, uh, the black people, you know, a lot of things. And like I said in the uh, beginning of this video, I like people who are not afraid to share their thoughts, uh, wrong or right. They, they share them because um, that is what they think. And that is crucial because if if I know what you think, then I will know how to engage with you from how and when or if ever I, I want to engage with you. Because a lot of people nowadays are hiding what they really think. And you get to know who they are when a scandal breaks out. But you see, somebody who is a straight shooter, you, you already know if you want to engage with them or not, right? So if you like my content, uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, see you in the next video.